Well, it's time for another R.A. Montgomery book. Whoa, what have we here? Oh, it's a snake. You know, we make fun of R.A. Montgomery sometimes because he certainly has written some books that are beyond bizarre, but he's also written some good stories as well. And the start of this one makes me think we're on to one of his better ones. The number of endings advertised is a more reasonable number, and it's not something absurdly high. And there are several pages before the first decision, so things bode well for this Montgomery book, and the topic itself is an interesting one. In Lost on the Amazon, you're a doctor specializing in tropical diseases and are currently at work on an expedition in Brazil on the Amazon River. Your job in this expedition is to seek out lost villages and lend your medical skills. After a delay from a difficult case prior to arriving here, you finally made it to Brazil and you're awaiting a guide. The others have already gone on without you a week and a half ago. And after the book departs a few educational facts about the Amazon, you find that you have a message waiting for you at the hotel. A man named Oaduga alerts you to the fact that your friends are lost deep in the Amazon jungle. He tells you that they heard a flute and followed it and haven't been heard from since. Supposedly, this mysterious flute music has claimed the lives of others before. And police officers arrive and insist that you organize a rescue party, but that it would take three days to arrange. Oaduga insists that you go now in his canoe. The hotel clerk says you should probably just rent a plane and go look for him that way. And so begins your first choice in this story. Now I would assume if they've been gone for several days already that waiting another three before looking is a bad idea. And the jungle is so dense I don't know that a plane would be much help. The only choice here that makes much sense is to just get in the canoe. Probably the most dangerous choice as well. Hell, maybe we'll find an awesome ending where I get choked out. So we're dealing with a three story plot line in this book. So let's get in the canoe with Oaduga and do this. Taking this path leads to voyaging down the Amazon River and maybe meeting some Amazons you can ask for help from or another tribe that insists you let a witch doctor put a curse on the tribe that has taken your friends before you go to rescue them. I've already run into some hokey endings in this book so far though. The book itself seems pretty promising in comparison to some of Montgomery's older works, but hitting these random quick endings that don't say much or say trippy mystical stuff can sometimes be absurd. And so far none have been absurd enough to be unintentionally funny. Okay. Well, I did get called out for being a coward in one inning, so that was actually kind of funny. Montgomery's writing style here has certainly improved over earlier works, though, but it's not quite high-grade material here just yet. Also, an interesting idea here that isn't common in other Choose Your Own Adventure books. These books typically present you as a kid in an unrealistic situation, but in Lost on the Amazon, you're portrayed as a young adult. If you manage to convince the Amazons to help you, they require your medical help first. Going with them can lead to a situation where you have to decide whether or not you wish to follow the flute music into the jungle. They have course warn you that this will be your death. It's up to you though, who knows. Running through the jungle I almost get choked out. Except it's a snake and not some angry adult. No, well, we can't always hit the jackpot. This is one of the books in the series where the story is not necessarily unified through all the branches. Anything can happen and frequently does, although the story itself in this main branch does follow the basic plot of navigate the river, meet tribes, and try to get help finding your friends. It's the endings that mostly send things into opposing directions. For instance, a tribe asks for medical help in exchange for helping me find my friends. Depending on choices made, they can turn out to help me after I treat their sickness, or I can find out that they lie and it's they who have captured my friends and now they'll kill me too. In a way, this sort of storytelling can be frustrating because the choices made that lead to these endings don't always seem like this is where they would go or anything learned from one ending doesn't necessarily carry over to helping you make better decisions if you backtrack. But I do know that authors in this series really did want choices to reflect real life in the sense that choosing one thing won't necessarily lead to what you thought would or should happen. In the real world, things can take you by surprise and in a Choose Your Own Adventure book, things can very seriously take you by surprise. Also, if these books had some moral code that left the reader convinced that always taking the so-called correct path would, without fail, bring you to a happy ending, well, they'd be boring books, I suppose. One of the things that makes them entertaining, and yes, frustrating, is that you never really know for sure if the choice you made was a good idea or not until you go for it. Knowing that, the way I always read these was to choose exactly what I would do in that situation if it were really happening to me and just see where it takes me. In an earlier Montgomery book, this got me quickly and randomly killed by a spider. In this book, I found myself having a spiritual awakening atop a pyramid, watching the jungle breathe carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen, and coming to the conclusion that I would find my friends in seven days and everything would be okay. Montgomery omitted the part in this ending where I ingested hallucinogens on my way up this pyramid. On to the B storyline. Flying the plane. In this branch you head off to find a pilot. Novaduga comes with you. Just as I figured, you can't really see anything from the air. You might wind up crashing the plane or after a normal landing, chasing after Oaduga as he randomly bolts into the jungle.
In one path, your pilot dies, and when you're told of his death, you don't even flinch or question. You just continue asking the women of the tribe who they are and where you are, totally unconcerned about the life of the guy you've been talking to for the last several hours. That struck me as weird. You learn that in this plot branch, at least. Your friends have been captured by a tribe and enslaved. They're set to be sacrificed by midnight. What a grim book for kids. Anyway, this tribe is not the same tribe that captured your friends in the A story. You're told you have to find a way into their village, steal the flute, and smash it to break the spell. They also offer up a bird cage with two snakes that you're meant to tie onto your head. Whether or not you accept this is up to you. If it's long been known that this tribe is enslaving people with a magic flute and then killing them, why the hell hasn't anyone just gone in with earplugs and a rifle and dealt with this shit? Whoa! In one section, I just killed two guys with a machete. Holy crap! The description was low-key, but I totally just gutted two dudes. This branch can also wind up having a very hard time getting started. Instead of exploring the jungle, it just devolves into a bad game of you trying to find a pilot and constantly failing to do so. Or even nearly wind up kidding kidnapped by a crazy pilot and poisoned. This guy just really wants to fly someone around. There are several inconclusive endings in the B story. The writing is generally good, but there are just too many endings that aren't fleshed out. On to the C storyline. The search party with the police. If you go this route, Oladuga vanishes and the hotel clerk just shakes his head in disapproval. The plan is to go up the river and drop one group of soldiers off in the jungle where your friends were last seen and then everyone else further upstream and have them circle back to the first group and see what everyone finds in between. This might end up in a firefight with bandits or your group of soldiers being drugged and captured by ghosts. Yeah, ghosts. It ain't a Montgomery book without at least one ending way out of left field. This amused me. Seems there's at least one successful ending in each of the three storylines, so you have a chance at a good ending no matter which branch you choose in the beginning. The artwork in this book, let's talk about this. This is phenomenal. This is easily the best artist this series has ever had, in my opinion. Leslie Morrill's work is really something to just stare at and take in. Most illustrations in the Choose Your Own Adventure series, even when they're great, don't approach this level of detail. Overall, the book is alright, with much better writing and clarity than earlier Montgomery works, but there's just too many of the endings lacking any fulfilling resolution, whether they're bad or good. They just seem to stop the story with you wanting to know what actually happened next because that's obviously not the end of the adventure. This one, while not a classic of the series, is still okay. If you want to see Montgomery's progression, it's worth a read, and the ideas behind this one were certainly great. Still, it could have been executed a lot better, so that kind of brings it down a few marks. Until next time.